Ben Chaviva Hilda Hatun. Today is the Yorset of the Rabbi, the first annual uh, uh, year of his passing. Uh, the Rabbi was one of the greatest Chachamim in the uh, Syrian community in Argentina. His, his son actually lives here in Miami and he has also a beautiful community in Netive Ezra, not far from here. Okay, that's the son of Rabbi Avishai Levi. So the father, Chacham Yechazchir Shalom Levi, was a great Tamil Chacham, great Sadiq. And uh, yes, it's already one year that passed from his passing. Yeah. Um, but I would like to, one second, Mechila, Senor Frey, acá nos está faltando esto. I would like to uh, share with you the following, the following uh, idea. We know that Am Yisrael, they had three things. The thanks to these three things, they had the Mary to go out from, from Egypt. Lo shinu et levusham, lo shinu et leshonam, ve lo shinu et shemotam. They didn't change not their names, not their language, and not their clothes. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I heard this, this famous Gemara, and I always had the question, what do you mean? Because it didn't change the name, that's a reason to go out from Egypt. Because it didn't change uh, the, the, the language. You know today how many Jews do you have that they don't speak Hebrew? There are uh, uh, worse Jews than others? Not at all. You know how many Jews today they don't have <coughs> Jewish names? Or at least they don't call them by the Jewish names? It's the reason by, uh, of having a Jewish name and a Jewish language and a Jewish clo uh, clothing, that's the reason why, why to go out from Egypt. Do you know how many Averot Amisrael did in Egypt? They were holding the same level of the Mitzrim until that point that Chazal are telling us <coughs> that the water in Yamsuf didn't want to split because Alalu of the Avodah Zarah ve Alalu of the Avodah Zarah. So only because your name is Abraham or it's Haq, so we're going to let you go? What's going on over here? And I think, Rabutai, there are many, many answers. Many, many answers. But one of the answers that I think it's the right answer is that these three things are connected to education. Educating the next generation. When you know that you are not like everybody else, when you know that you have your own name, a name represents an identity. When you know that your identity is unique, when you know that the way how you dress represents your behavior, you want to see people, respectful people, they dress respectful. You see people from the streets, they dress from the like the street. When you want to show how special you are, that you are not like the street outside, that you have nothing to do with the environment that, are, that is surrounding you, you are special, automatically, that's already the source, the source that can take you out from Egypt. Rabotai, it's a halakha. The Rambam writes this halakha. Or every single Jew have to have a special garment, different way like that they're going to wear. You're going to ask me, but Rabbi, today everybody wears the same, same t-shirts and the same pants and same yes and no. We have tzitzit, we have our kippah, we have to have a way of dressing that is different than the goyim. Not only that, the Jew have to understand yes. We can dress in the same, we can buy in the same, uh, in the same uh, stores our garments. Macy's, and I don't know which, you know which stores there are. But what are the clothes that I'm going to wear? I'm going to wear, you know, the, the broken uh, uh, pants, you know, the, the, the streets uh, garment, or I'm going to dress in a, in a presentable way. Halakha is that a Jew must have a, a, a special way of dressing. That's halakha. Why is this halakha? Because Hamim are teaching us 
The way how you dress is the way how you behave. And the way how you behave must be different than the way how the Goy behaves outside in the street. Rabotai, the concept of Chinuch, the concept of educating, it's the pillar of all Judaism. If we don't know how to educate our future generations in the right path, there is no future. You know, in Israel, when they had the state of Israel at the beginning, so they came with a new concept, it was called Kibbutzim. You probably heard about it, right? Kibbutz. Kibbutz Alev Shalom doesn't exist anymore. The concept of kibbutz is dead. The concept of kibbutz was everybody's the same. We're going to be all one big family. We're all working for the same, from the same, uh, uh, for the same pot. We're dividing the same. You have nothing that makes you special. You are not unique. And I will tell you the simple reason why you get wound is because when you educate that there is no one that is special, when you don't give me that feeling that you're unique and no one can take your job, no one can take your, your mission in this world, this type of mindset cannot, cannot, uh, cannot continue on. Why am I telling you all this? Because if we look good, we just saw it last, last parashiot, when we look good, we're going to see how every single one of our forefathers, Abraham, Mitzhak, and Yaakov, they had children, and those children, each one of them was unique and different. And Borei Olam wasn't asking from Esav to be like Yaakov and from Ishmael to be like Yitzhak. No. And the, parent, the parents knew that. And that's why the parents, they knew that each one of them had his own mission. And even Yaakov, that he had 12 kids, he knew that each one of his kids is different. He's different. And he's going to give the garments to Yosef because this is Yosef. And all the rest of the brothers are going to say, what about us? What do you mean, what about us? There is no such concept us. There is you and you and you. And Yaakov is going to prove it by giving berachot to each one of them as separate. And we have to understand what Chachamim are telling us and what Shlomo Amenech says. Chanoch lanar al pi darko. Continue. Gam ki asur. Gam ki yaskin. No yasur mimena. Right? Chanoch lanar al pi darko means educate your kid in his unique path. Each kid is different. And the Gemara writes, Hashem Shepar Tufayim Shonim, the same way that their faces are different. Also, their, their being is different. Their goal is different. Their mission is different. And I cannot treat my kids, all of them, the same. Each one has his own path, and I have to care about each one needs. I said, I think, over last week for the early Minyan, a fantastic story that I, that I saw. It's mechazek, you know. I don't know if I'm going to give you all the details because, because I don't remember all the details of the story. But it goes like this. There was a family in Eretz Israel, Baruch Hashem, religious family. The kids were all B'nai Torah, going to the good schools, going to the go and the girls going to the right, B'd Yaakov. Beautiful. Baruch Hashem, one of the days, one of the kids is growing and he goes out for Shiduchim and he's getting his, uh, the Shiduch that he wants and he's getting engaged. And Be'ezat Hashem, they're fixing the day of the wedding. The day of the wedding arrives. Every, everybody's so excited. The whole family, they're about to walk to the chuppah. And then the Hatan, the boy, turns up to his mother and he tells her, Mom, I want to tell you something. You, you are the only one that had the merit that today I'm going to stand under this chupa and I'm going to get married to a girl that she is a girl that wants to build up a house of Torah. You are the one that have the merit. This is what I mean. Me, daddy, school, everybody, all the rabbis, eh? only you. Why? And she tells him, Dad, Mom, years ago I was in yeshiva. You remember I had 
certain type of uh, very tough year. I wasn't focusing my learning. The friends that I had, the friends that I had were not the best friends. And one day, my friends decided the halas. Enough, it's enough. They don't want to get any more connected to the yeshiva world, any more connected to the religious environment. And they decided that they're planning to leave to Thailand. Thailand, I think it was, or India, one of those crazy countries. They're going to travel there. No return ticket, one way ticket. And he tells his mom, Mom, I was called by my friends, and I said, yes, I'm going with you. And that's it. Without you knowing, I came home, and I put all my belongings into a backpack, and we fixed a certain day that we're going we're gonna <coughs> to leave. Before I continue this part of the story, says the kid, but Mom, you remember many, many years ago, I was a child, 80 years old, 8, 9 years old. And one day, mom, don't ask me how, I don't remember the, the part of the story, don't ask me how, the mother, maybe she was working and making uh, cakes, I don't know what, the mother had a special cake for a wedding of somebody. You know the cakes of wedding, right? Three layers, four layers. She had that cake happened to be that the mother told her, her son, the son had siyum of a masechet mishnayot that in the class they were doing. And they asked from him to bring a cake. So the mom prepared a cake. And by mistake, she told the son, in the morning, you know, they were rushing to go to school, told her son, take the cake that is on the counter, Take it to school. That's the cake for for the siyum. The kid, the kid got to the to the counter in the corner of the kitchen. He sees a, a huge cake, and he says, "Aha! Uh -huh. Wow! My friends are gonna get crazy." He took the cake and he started to go to school. Gets to school, and the boys and the rabbis and everybody was amazed. Wow, what a cake for a siyum masechet. And then the mother realized the mistake. The mother came to the kitchen. And she realized that the big cake is not there. Small cake is there. Now what she's going to do? And she said to herself, what should I do? <laughs> to go to the school and to ask for my son to give me back the cake. Hazit. All the emotion, all the this. On the other hand, I had to give this cake to a certain wedding. Anyway, she decided to arrange the, the issue. She bought another cake for the wedding, and she left that amazing cake for the child for the Siyum Masechet. Years passed by. And says the kid to his mother, Mom, going back to the first story, I'm about to leave with my friends to Thailand. That's it. Throw our kippah, throw our tzitzit, go out enjoying life. And I was hungry, and I decided before we take the taxi to the Natbad, to the Ben, ben, ben Gurion Airport, I will pass by one of the bakeries to take, I don't know, a, a rogalach or a croissant. And I step over, and I'm about to buy one croissant, and all of a sudden my eyes capture a beautiful three layers cake. And I'm looking at that, that, about that cake. I'm looking at the cake. And all of a sudden I remember what happened years ago when I was eight years old. And I remember every single part of the story. How you told me to take the cake. And how I saw the cake and I came inside the class and everybody jumped on me. What a cake! And the rabbis couldn't believe. And we did the siyum. And they put me on the shoulders of one of the rabbis and we were dancing and singing and then they took the cake and they gave cake to everybody and it felt such a good feeling of a siyum masechet. And at that moment that I remembers 
All this movie, he says to himself, and now what? Look all what my mom put effort for me. All what she did, she prepared such an unbelievable cake for me, for a siyum and today I'm going to leave her like that? Today I'm going to throw all what she told me to the garbage? He says it went out from the bakery. And he was sure that he's going to go to his friends and he's going to tell them, I'm not going with you guys. Mom, today I'm standing under the chupa. I sat in Nishiva. Baruch Hashem, I got back to, back to myself. And I'm able to stand under the chupa knowing that all my friends are still lost out there. And I, I'm about to build up a Bait Neiman Israel only in your merit. Rabotai, sometimes education has to do in the example in how much we trust our children. Every child is different. Every kid has his own path, and we have to trust him, not, lo- not only by giving words, but by showing actions, by showing, yes, I'm different. Last night I was with a boy. This boy wants to get married, and he's a boy that Baruch Hashem is getting closer and closer to Judaism. And he told me a few times already, he told me that uh, for sure once he will get married, he wants, together with his, uh, with his uh, girlfriend, to, to have a house of Torah, a house that they will keep kosher and Shabbat. And I said, you know, Hazaku Baruch, it's unbelievable. And last night we were giving a shiur, and then he tells me, like that in the ear, he tells me, Rabbi, I think it's going to be impossible for me. It's going to be impossible for me to have my girlfriend to change, to, be, to keep Shabbat. He says, why? Why impossible? He says, because I know her. You know, she's not going to accept it so easily. And then a friend of him that was also in the shield, all of a sudden he turns up to him and he tells him, what are you talking about? Do you know that I, that I was also like you? And I was able to turn my, the mindset of my girlfriend? Today, both of us were keeping Shabbat. So he asked him how you did it. And he says, it's very simple. One day I came up to her. And I said to her, from now on, on I'm going to start keeping Shabbat to myself. I'm not telling you what to do. I decided to keep Shabbat correctly. The boy turns up to me and he says, you're right. If I'm not going to start by myself, how do you want me to change all this? <coughs> Rabotai, the example starts in our own behavior. You want somebody else to change? First of all, you have to see how you are able to show the right example. I told this story in the past, I'm going to repeat it. But I think it's very powerful. That's why I think it's correct to repeat it now. I said over that it was this Yehudi that had also a child, Shovav, troublemaker. And this child, Shovav, unfortunately, started to go off the derech started to go off the derech. What can I tell you? He left, he stopped going to yeshiva, stopped going to shul, stopped putting on the tefillin, stopped the, the only thing the parents, that's what the rabbi told them, keep your kid in your house, don't throw him out. You know, you never know. Trade him nice, trade him well. You heard the story? He says like this, one day, all of a sudden, they see that the child starts to put up a small, tiny kippah in his head. So, ah. The father tells his, uh, his wife, Honey, you saw the small kippah of our... Shh! Say hello. I know that. Give it that way. And the kippah started to grow. Miracle. Started to grow the kippah. And then not only the kippah, all of a sudden, they see one day, a string of tzitzit going out of the back. I couldn't believe their, I couldn't believe their eyes. Did I say to him a word? And then, more weeks were passing, and the kids started to come to shul for Shabbat. I will tell you, one day, the kid comes to his father and tells him, Daddy, I want to go back to yeshiva. Can you help me? 
and the dust falls. And he cried. He hugged his son. And he told him, I can't believe what I'm hearing. For sure I'm going to help you. And for sure, and I'm so happy. And then the father asked him, Honey, can you tell me what happened? Can you tell me what, what, what? You know, we tried so hard. What happened? He says, Dad, I want to tell you something. If you remember years ago, not years ago, months ago, you came back home from a shiur, and you get so inspired in that shiur that at the table of Shabbat, you had all the family around, and you wanted to give an announcement. What was the announcement? You said, guys, I was in a shiur, and the, sh the rabbi spoke about how important it is to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu about all the good things that He gives you. Stop complaining. Stop, you know, talking negative. Look about all the details. How many people, they don't have what you have. And He gave an announcement in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the, in the Shabbat table saying that from now on, on, you want every single Shabbat to hear from all the family good things about what Hashem is giving, uh, giving to us. And he said, I'm going to serve with myself. And he started to appreciate his wife and his kids and the great food that he had and the health that he had. He says, Daddy, that day I was standing at the end of the, of the table and I was looking at you and I was thinking, ah, this guy, I you know him by heart. I know my dad. Today, he's talking, yeah, I'm going to think, I'm going to think. Wait, I'm not giving you even three days. You're going to go back to normal. What's back to normal? He's going to come back complaining and yelling. And that I was looking at you, not for one week, for a whole entire month. Looking your behaviors. You remember that day, Dad, that you, take me, you took me to one of the places that I needed, and then all of a sudden a car went back to you and it crushed you a little bit, right? It hit you. I was sure that's it. Today, my dad is going to show his real face. And you went out. And before you went out, you look at me, you look behind and you say, everybody's okay? He says, yes. You stopped and he started to say, thank you, Bore Olam. We are healthy, and Baruch Hashem, and who cares, okay, so we have a small heat in the back in the car. And you went out, and you told the guy, don't worry, everything's going to be fine, if you want to pay good, if not, it's fine also. I couldn't believe my eyes. And then you remember that, that day, that you went to the kitchen, and you were arranging the plates, and, the, and then all of a sudden, one of the plates slipped from your, from your hands, and the whole pile of plates just fall into the ground and they broke. And your behavior was, Baruch Hashem, we have things what to get broken. There are families that they don't, don't even have plates to get broken. Dad, I want to tell you something. The reason, the main reason why years back I didn't want to follow the ways of the Torah was because all of my life what I was hearing at home was complaints. We don't have enough money. We have this problem, that problem, and this guy is making us troubles. And I said, this is the type of house that I want for me? Uh-uh. And if this is Judaism, I don't want the Judaism. And when he came back that day, and he gave me the right example, without you even knowing, he changed and he showed me what is really Judaism all about? Daddy, I want this type of life for myself as well. Rabotai, sometimes one action is equal of a hundred words that we can try to say. And education is the proof of that. So each one of us, Baruch Hashem, depending on the, of the, of the years that we are, if you, ha if you have kids, if you have grandkids, if you don't have nothing yet, and you're going gonna to have soon, Bezat Hashem. It doesn't matter where we're holding, which stage in our lives. 
one thing we have to know. You want to change others? We must start with ourselves. Educate ourselves first, and then automatically, other people are going to change as well. Amen. 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 Amen.